Hey guys, what is up? Welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Jacqueline Cosmetics Prep In Set Collection. So if you want to see all of my thoughts on that, then just keep watching. Hi guys, if you're new here, my name is Morgan. I am a product knowledge enthusiast. I just love knowing anything and everything about all of the new makeup on the market and sharing my thoughts with you guys. So I was lucky enough that I was able to pick up all four pieces of the Jaclyn Cosmetics Prep and Set Collection. Normally they've been not completely selling out, but they've sold out of all the colors I've always wanted because I have hallway duty <laughs> at school at the time that she always launches. But this launch, pretty much nothing sold out. Right now there's a few things sold out as time has gone on, but everything was available even 30 minutes after. So that was nice. Right now this collection is currently only available on the Jacqueline Cosmetics website. I did order expedited shipping, so it came quite fast. I'm happy with the shipping and all of that. So let's get into the collection details. Now, why this collection appealed to me is because Jacqueline loves her powders and the claims on these were pretty big. They were supposed to be powders that were still hydrating, they provided coverage, and they still would keep a glow. At least that's what she claims, and we know Miss Jaclyn Hill is probably the best at selling you things. Like, she can sell anything. And so I was like, let me test it out. Let's see. So in the collection, there is everything from a hydrating under eye powder to a translucent powder to a brightening and setting palette and then a loose powder as well. It's a lot of powders going on. And I have to say, I don't think you need all of the powders because at least for my practice of makeup, I don't like to over powder, whereas Jaclyn does. So when I apply these powders, I'm going to apply them in a way that works best for me. I've played with all of these items two times before, so this will be my third time using these. And I've tried it Jaclyn's way, and I've tried it my way, and I, I like my way better for myself. So if you apply makeup similar to me, or you don't like baking or anything like that, then this is probably the video for you. If you're a baker, you like heavy powder, packing it on, which is a look in of itself, nothing wrong with that, maybe not the review for you. So let's get into it. We're gonna start off with the first item in this collection. This is the Prep Starter Hydrating Under Eye Primer. This is currently the only item that is out of stock on her website right now, but I personally don't think you're missing out. It is $24 and it is made in Canada with a 12 month shelf life. Now the claims on this were that it blurred the under eyes and really hydrated them and was the perfect base for under eye concealer. Now it comes in just some clean white packaging, nothing wrong with it. And you are getting 0.3 fluid ounces of product. Now when you open it up, it has this silver cap. Now the reason why it's white is because the first time I used this, I squeezed way too much product out so it's still left over. Now the tip is cooling. I definitely feel that. I have gunk in my eyes because I created a look before this, so ignore that. And it really does cool the under eyes. It feels fantastic. Now, the cream itself is a bit thick, so if too much comes out, you don't want all of that under the eyes. I'm very picky about under eye creams because milia can be created under my eyes if I use an eye cream that's too thick. So I don't see this for me being something in my skincare routine or something that I use often just because my under eyes are particular with the consistency of under eye cream. So for me, this is definitely not going to be a repurchase just because of my sensitive skin. But that being said, it does hydrate the under eyes. I think as a pre-makeup base, it is a bit thicker than what I would prefer or recommend. It does sink into the skin and I think the idea is that it's supposed to kind of fill in those lines, hence why it would be thicker. But for me, it almost feels like the thickness of a night cream. It's not something that I'm personally crazy about. Other people have seem to really like it. I don't really notice it too much of filling in my fine lines or anything. If it were me, I would just push you towards it any other eye cream. I don't really think there's anything exceptional or different about it, but it's not bad. I really like the cooling tip and it does feel nice and it does hydrate my under eyes. It's not a standout product to me in this collection. So while this sinks in, I am going to do my eyebrows, my foundation, and my concealer. And we've got a lot of powdering 
to do. So my skin is ready. There's no powder on it. I use the Too Faced Born This Way Multi-Use Concealer, just in case you were wondering, and my under eyes do look hydrated and smooth. Like I said, I do think that the under eye hydrator, it does work. My under eyes are definitely more hydrated. I just don't know that it's exceptional or different than what's already out on the market, but she's nice for sure. Okay, <laughs> the first product that I want to use is the Face It All Brightening and Setting Palette. I can imagine this is probably one of the more popular items in the launch and I forgot to show you guys all of the boxes come in just plain silver packaging pretty cute nice definitely her aesthetic it's white plastic packaging with the J it's like plastic but it's like good it's sturdy. I chose the shade light to medium. This was $39. As of now, the only shade that is out of stock is the fair to light. There are four shades and yeah, I chose light to medium. These are made in Italy. They have a 12 month shelf life. So when you open it up, you'll see you have four shades. Now the intention of this is to brighten. So they are supposed to be a little bit lighter than your skin tone. And when, when I swatch these, there's very subtle differences between them. Like honestly, this could have been two powders. I feel like even though the tones are slightly different, I really don't feel like it will translate on this face, especially if you apply with a brush like I do. Now in Jacqueline's demo, where's my sponge? She actually took a sponge and went right in with her under eyes. I did that. This powder, she says it's more sheer. I find it to be a little bit thicker. Like it's a robust powder. If you have oily skin, your skin might actually thrive with this because this has pigmentation. It definitely brightens and it has some thickness to it. It's not like a silica based powder. You're gonna get actual powder on your brush. So let me do that to my under eyes. Let me find my brush. So $39 is a lot. It's definitely a high-end price, so it better be good, right? So I'm using a Refer number 19 brush. I just think this is perfect for applying powder. When I did do this with the sponge, like I said, it was a bit too thick for my preferences. Less is more for me, and I really like this brightening yellow shade. For my skin tone, it's super duper brightening. Look how pretty that is. And then I'm going to go into this more neutral shade right here which honestly might be a little bit more brightening. You can see this light medium palette is quite brightening on me and I'm not super into really bright under eyes. So I like using a more skin tone type concealer on my under eyes and I think actually going in with a brightening powder is kind of nice over top to add that dimension and shape to the face. But really, like I said, I don't notice too much difference between the powders with the exception of like this one to this one because this is significantly lighter, this one is significantly deeper. So for this one, I'm gonna put it on my forehead and her powder Powders aren't supposed to mattify. I will say this is one of the more mattifying products in this line. So I think oily skin will actually like this best. And it looks really pretty. It did kind of blur the skin a little bit, uh, but I think what stands out about this is the coverage that it has that the actual pigmentation does brighten the face. Now, this is a little bit more drying on my <laughs> dry skin. So if you were wondering about my skin type, I have more normal to dry skin right now. I think I woke up. It's a little bit more thirsty today. And I did notice that while this does blur, it does also dehydrate just a little bit. And it does kind of flatten the face. It's not a complete flat matte but it does mattify the face for sure so this is a little bit more of the heavy duty product if you ask me next I want to go into the bake and brighten under eye powder so this guy is $29 so it's a little bit cheaper than the palette there are five shades and the shades are interesting you have like a lilac shade a pink shade a banana shade so these are almost more so color correcting tones now the packaging right here it's just like a square kind of like her loose highlighters and this is made in the USA and it has a 12 month shelf life. So when you open it up, this is what it looks like. Now I picked up the shade Brightening Light Banana and what Jacqueline uses this for is for her baking. She uses it for coverage. So she'll put a lot of that powder down here and I'll demo that for you as well. But I did want to try it on the under eyes. I mean, I've already tried it on the under eyes, but I did want to show you. I'm using the same brush and I'm not packing it on, I'm just lightly applying it. And I've got to admit, with a brush, I prefer the way that this powder looks compared to the 
palette. So that's why I wanted to do this split face for you. To me, it's more hydrating than the palette. I feel like the palette dries my skin a little bit more, whereas this guy actually hydrates my skin. So if you have dry skin, I think that you will really enjoy this loose powder and it does brighten my skin just enough. It's not as brightening as the palette, but I feel like it's just more hydrating and it looks more lightweight on my skin. I did actually bake this earlier today on my under eye just to see how it would look and I still felt like even baked on, this side looked better than the palette side. So I'm all for this powder. There is a little bit less versatility than this guy, but I think overall it just, my type of skin, it looks better. It blurs. It keeps a little bit more of the glow. It still does slightly mattify. It doesn't completely mattify, but it still does allow a little bit of glow to peek through. And you can see, I feel like this has more coverage than the loose powder. She said the loose powder has more coverage and built up, especially with this sponge, this gives you a lot of coverage, but with just a brush, this gives lighter coverage than this does. Like the palette, I feel like is more coverage than she said. I'm gonna quickly put this on my forehead and you can see there's still a little bit of shine peeking through. It does mattify, but as time goes on, those oils will peek through. But something about this just looks a lot more softening and natural on my skin and overall much more hydrating, which is what I prefer. So surprisingly, I really love this powder. I was not expecting to like it as much as I do. And we'll come back to this, but I wanna show the last product first. So we have the Last Act Translucent Setting Powder. This just comes in a square case. It is made in Italy. This has a 36 month shelf life. As of now, she only has the one translucent shade, but she said if the reaction from us as consumers are very good, she wants to add more colors. And I think she's gonna have to because this is pretty white. I don't know if you can see but you know if you have a deeper skin tone that's going to show up I don't care if you blend it out it's going to leave a little bit of a cast over the skin if you do have a deeper complexion the catch of this is it's not supposed to be like a normal translucent setting powder it's supposed to have pearls in here that give the skin a glow and you guys that is so true now you don't get fallout with this but I don't know if you can see this but this has pearls and I don't know if you saw that, but instantly you could see the pearl action happening. And I've got to admit, I really like it. Normally, I don't like powders that have pearls in them because I feel like it almost looks slightly glittery on the face. You can see the glow. Look at that difference. This is a translucent powder that actually adds the glow and really does what she said it would. Again, I was not expecting to like this. I was expecting to be like, it's just a powder, you don't need it. But if you really like a powder that has a glow that will still set your face, this is awesome. I don't know if my oily skin girls are gonna like this, but if you have dry skin like me, this powder, I love the pearls to it. It's really natural and it does add some dimension and glow to the face while also setting it. Arguably, probably the most, dare I say, innovative product in this particular launch as far as just being different from the other products on the market. Now, you know, you can argue Hourglass has that ethereal ambient glow to the powders. This is not like an Hourglass. It's a translucent powder that just has some pearls to it. Not as pretty, not as blurring as the Hourglass. This one is not really blurring, but it's just a setting powder that keeps the glow on the skin and applies a really nice natural glow. And I really, really like this. I was not expecting to like this. $28, but probably the product that I'm most impressed by in this collection. So I'm gonna actually go in with her bronzer and blush duo in the shade Pink Me Up and Oh Honey, and then I'll be back because I do want to show you a little bit of the baking powder and how that would work. Bronzer blush is on, so we're gonna sculpt the cheeks a little bit more going back in with the loose powder. Now, I'm not a big baker, and for me, with her powders, I didn't like the way that this looked when I applied it with a sponge, but I did like the way that this looked when I applied it with a sponge on my under eyes. It's not really for me, I will show you it though, but first we're gonna do kind of how she goes crazy with this, and you can see this has that pigmentation that I was talking about. You're not gonna get that coverage with a brush, which is why I kind of prefer that. I don't need that coverage. I just like the lighter veil that it gives, but she ain't kidding. This definitely uh, gives you a bit of coverage. I do like this technique. I usually <laughs> kind of do this on a lighter scale though. Like I'll use a lighter skin tone powder under here, but I guess for the sake of the video, <laughs> we'll do that. And I'll do just a little bit down my nose. Now this I thought got a little bit drying when I used it down my nose. My nose is extra dry to begin with, so 
especially today for whatever reason. So we're just gonna go pretty lightly and then I'm gonna press just a little bit right here and right here. Even though this side is like the powdery side. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna let that sit for literally like two minutes and then we'll take it off just so you can see. So again, like I said, the baking life, it's not really for me. I only let this set for like one minute. Less is more when it comes to powder, especially with my dry skin. I don't know how she does it with this powder while having dry skin. Um, but anyways, I'm just gonna use the brush and you can see it, it does leave a little bit of residue there that I kind of have to get a little bit gritty with and kind of blend it off and take it off to create a seamless blend so it doesn't look like there's such a harsh line. So I do have to go in a little bit, kind of, Take this off. Ugh. My nose is looking super dry, y'all. You see that? Now it looked dry to begin with, but this did not help. So if you're having a really dry day, stay away from it. But where I placed it, it did leave that brightness there. And it's not overly drying on the skin, even on the under eye. Well, actually, my under eyes are starting to look a little bit crepey. In general, I just don't recommend baking with this product if you're not into baking. If you have never liked the look of baking, this powder isn't gonna change your mind. That's the best way to put it. If you like baking, I think you will like this powder, but if you don't like baking, this isn't changing the baking game for you. Like you can see, because I baked under there, it's getting a little bit more crepey especially on the area on top of the palette because that powder for me is just more drying anyways. It looks better on the other side. So I don't love it for that purpose. So I am going to finish the rest of my makeup and I'm gonna be back to share with you my final thoughts and my favorite ways of application for this product. All right, makeup is complete. Let's go over my final thoughts of these products. If you're curious about anything that I'm wearing, it will be linked in the description box down below for you. This look is in the Natasha Denona Zeno palette tutorial video that I just filmed. So if you wanna know how I did this look, it will be there. But back to Jacqueline Cosmetics. Overall, I think it's a good launch. I don't think you need everything. It's just a lot of different kind of powder Powders. And for me personally, I'm not really into the way that she marketed these products and how to use them. I just, it's unrealistic, I think, for the everyday person and everyday skin because her skin is perfect. She goes to dermatologists and she just naturally has beautiful skin. Starting off with the hydrating under eye primer, people seem to like this. I mean, I wasn't overly impressed with it. I think it did a good job. It does what it claims and it's just fine, but it's also not an extraordinary product. So it's good to pick up if you don't have like an under eye hydrator, but if you use eye creams every day in your makeup routine, anyways then I think you're good I think this is kind of like the main thing of this collection and it actually was one of my least favorite things I found the powders to be quite drying on my under eye they do provide a good coverage and like I said it's a thicker powder but for me on my dry skin it really made my skin look a lot more dry than I wanted and uh, please I mean to each their own but this with the sponge was super drying and cakey and I did not like that way with application I much prefer using this with a brush and applying this with a brush all over the skin it looks just fine it's a decent powder but nothing again extraordinary for me my favorite product I think is the loose setting powder I think this is the most natural looking I think it blurs the skin the most and it's not too much on the skin it keeps the skin looking hydrating as well as still providing coverage and having that versatility I wasn't interested in this product but I think it really does work the best I think it works the best with the sponge as well this is the one where I can take it on and it still looks okay but again I still prefer the finish with just a brush don't put too much of this on I like the way that I apply it and I like the way that these products look when I apply them the way that I apply them <laughs> and it's a it's a beautiful powder if you use it the way that you like to use it and lastly the translucent setting powder I don't think this is gonna be for everybody if you have oily skin and you like to mattify the skin and really control the oils I think you will not like this I don't recommend this to you but if you're like me and you just just want a light set to the face because you have dry skin and you want to keep the glow underneath I think this is really pretty again if you have a deeper skin tone I can imagine that this will leave a white cast over your face that won't be pretty so I do wish she had come out with a deeper version even in the initial launch that would have made sense because this is white and it does carry some whiteness on the face but for me I actually really really like this product but I can definitely tell this is a product that not everybody is gonna like it's kind of it's too shimmery for some people I think but I think it looks gorgeous on the skin for me personally and it leaves a very subtle pearl to the skin that I think is absolutely beautiful. So as far as what I would recommend the most, um, 
I mean, I, I like this one the best. I would recommend this one the most, but I can see people still liking the palette. And if you liked what I had to say about this, maybe give this one a try. But it's not perfect, but I still really like it. So that's all I have for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and found it helpful. If you tried these products out, let me know what you think down below. If you aren't subscribed to my channel already, I hope you would consider taking the time to do so. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye guys, have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.